I apply the lessons and the, the teachings of when I was a hotel executive into what I do now as a photographer. You have to think about ROI and how it's going to turn around your business. Here's where we are so dumb as photographers. Oh, I can't lower my rates. She's going to talk about it. Now, then my rate structure will be ruined. Are you in? Seriously? <laughs> I hear so many excuses. Oh, I can't make it. There's so many photographers. You're sitting here telling me you don't want to work for a day and make $3,500. Are you on drugs? Because here's the thing, guys, if they dig your work, they are going to scratch and claw and do everything they can to book you. Well, guys, thank you for being here today. Um, I'm really happy to be here with you guys today to talk about something that's super important, which is obviously light. Lighting is the key ingredient to making photography work. And while I am here and this workshop is sponsored by Rotolite, uh, while I am here to represent them, I want to not throw a sales pitch at you guys. I want to really educate and talk about lighting and how lighting can change what we do and how it can make yourself a better photographer. Guys, if you look at lighting, lighting um, separates the pros from everyone else. Lighting is what gives you the ability to charge more money. Lighting is what enables you guys to live out your dreams and and I think that's super important but I'm not just gonna sit here and bang road light over your head for three hours we're gonna talk about light we're gonna talk about how you can use lighting techniques to improve yourself no matter what it is that you want to do no matter if that's you want to make money at photography if you just want to be a better hobbyist if you're a current full-time pro and you're just looking to get up to that next level that's what we're here to talk about today I want to make sure that this is a viable learning experience for you and that's very important. I have, there's, there's a couple products here that we're here to show you guys today. One is the AOS and the other one is the Neo2. One thing that is critical about gear and one thing that many photographers make the mistake of doing is they, they we as photographers, and I definitely think of myself in this regard, and uh, you know, I, I mentioned this yesterday in my presentation, but anytime I make a joke or stuff, about the way photographers act or what we do. I, I'm, I'm talking about my former self. You guys need to understand that. So, you know, I, I always, just like you guys out there, you probably are all smarter than I ever was, so you didn't do any of the dumb things that I've done. But because I'm self-taught, everything that I learned, it was by trial and error. Everything that I learned was by trial and error. It was failing. It was failing until I succeeded. And if there's one lesson I hope you take away from today, it's that, I don't care how good you are at lighting, I don't care how good you are at posing, composition no matter what it is, if you're lazy, you're not going to make it. hate to break it to you, but it's the truth. That's number one. Number two, I'm pretty blunt, <laughs> if you can't tell. Number three, guys, you got to be persistent. you got to be persistent. A, a theme that I'm really starting to work on right now is talking to people about, we all have big dreams, right? We all have big dreams. But see, to me, it's not really a dream if you're not willing to sacrifice for it. You know, I, I'm, I'm really starting to, to, to make the statement at this point saying dream big, sacrifice bigger. If you can't make a sacrifice for your dream, it's not a dream, it's a silly notion. It's just this thing that, oh, that'd be fun to do. It'd be fun to be a millionaire. Yeah, it would. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to get there, right? Not all of us are trust fund babies. So as we go through talking about today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on giving you guys real advice real advice that you guys can take home and you can implement for your careers and for your hobbies no matter what they may be i want you guys to be successful i do i really really do why because i think that we don't have enough to be honest with you i really don't think we have enough well-trained photographers in the industry i think we have a lot of untrained folks out there and one of the reasons why I do these events is to, in my small way, give back. Give back to the industry and hopefully help to educate the generation that's coming. And when I say generation of photographers, I think it's important to note, it doesn't matter about your age. Photography is an interesting vocation in that we, myself, I'm, I'm one of them. I quit hotels as a hotel executive and I'm doing this now. And I love it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, but 
it doesn't matter how old you are, whatever it is that you want to do, what matters is how you're going to get there. What is your dream? What is your dream? And I'm, I'm wrapping this conversation about lighting, and you'll see we'll come for full circle on this stuff, but it's important that you understand none of this matters. I could sit up here and I could already be showing you the Neo 2 and how cool it is. It doesn't matter if you guys aren't going to put it to good use. It doesn't matter if you guys don't have solid business techniques in place to actually have an ROI on this light. It doesn't matter. And if you guys don't take a look at the in the mirror and say, you know what, I am going to sacrifice for this. I am gonna not, I'm not talking about the light, I'm talking about your careers. If you're not going to sacrifice for this, you're not going to make it. Everyone can sit up there and talk about dreams, but dreams <laughs> take work. You got to work, y'all. And if those dreams are, you just want to take the best, you just want to be the best picture taker of your grandkids out of all of your group of friends, then that's your dream. That's cool. If you want to run around the world like I do and take pictures of beautiful ladies and handsome men and see all these exotic locations, you got to go for it. I'm going to come out with a t-shirt that says hashtag 300 weddings. That's what it took for me to do what I'm doing today. 300 weddings. Do you guys think I enjoyed every single wedding? Do you think every client was the best client in the whole wide world? Or do you think I may, out of those 300, I may have had five or 10 that weren't so fun to deal with? I didn't. Not all of them were, you know, I, I had a few Kardashians in there, right? And the, the point I'm trying to make is every time I shot a wedding, every time I did a gig that I didn't want to do, I just thought, that's all right, I'm going to Africa. I remember distinctly, I was shooting one wedding and the bride was just being a real you know what. And I'm like, you know what? I already had my trip booked and I was like, dude, just whatever she says, let it roll right off your back. You are going to Africa in two weeks. <laughs> and I was like, it's all good, man. I had another client say, you know, just do some shenanigans with me. And I'm like, you know what? They just bought that 70 to 200 for you. We're all good. You know what I mean? That's, I always look at it that way. I think another mistake photographers make is they get hung up on, I have to have a set rate structure and I have to do this and I have to do that. Guys, that's not the way the business world works. Come on, y'all. I, I, I grew up, so to speak, as a professional in the hospitality industry. I was a hotel executive. I apply the lessons and the, the teachings of when I was a hotel executive into what I do now as a photographer. You guys can go down to the local Marriott, Sheraton, Starwood, Weston, whatever hotel. One night it's 200 bucks, next night it's 3,000. What happens, this is Pasadena, what, what do the uh, rates do during uh, Rose, Rose Parade? Through the roof. You see the hotels apologizing? No, they make their money. And then when it's empty and it's cold and nobody wants to visit, they're charging $100 for a room. Why do we not think that way as photographers? I don't get it. I really don't get it. I was doing a bridal fair five years ago, and uh, a bride comes up, she goes, I love your work, I could never afford you. I said, you could probably afford me. Oh, no, I never could afford you. And she goes, how much she charge? I said, you know, it's a, a typical wedding is gonna be between seven to 10 grand. Oh, I could, I could never afford that. How much money do you have? I ask that to people all the time. I'm very bold, guys. Don't, don't, and when they say, oh, I don't have a budget, we all know that's a lie. That's a lie. And it's a polite lie. They're not lying to be malicious. They just don't want to tell you that they don't have enough money. We all do that, right? <laughs> we walk into a Ferrari dealership. Oh, I can afford this. I just choose not to buy it. Bull crap. You can't afford it. <laughs> right? So when someone says to you, I don't have a budget, you, uh, the perfect response, just keep it upbeat, keep it positive. Say, oh, that's no problem. So if I charge you $10,000, you do it. Oh, no, no, I, no. All right, great. If I charge you five grand, would you do it? Uh, you got to read that body language. Okay, what if I charge you $3,500? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. And I'll always laugh and I'll say, see, you have a budget. Oh, I just, I never thought about it till now. Well, good, I helped you find your way. That's exactly, I said, so if I did your wedding, this is exactly, I'll break down and I'll get somebody to book with me in about 30 seconds. And I'll say, do you love my work? You guys got to understand, that's the key to booking. Do you love my work? If somebody says to me, I haven't really looked at your work, I'll literally say, let's get off the phone. You look at my work, call me back if you love it. If you don't, don't call me back. 
That's, that's the rule. You should never, ever hang up on a customer who's called you. Guys, if they're not in love with you, you are talking about how many pictures, how many f albums. You're not talking about the work. You're talking about just simple commodities at that point. You, you, you guys understand that? What's your name, brother? Noel. Noel. So Noel has a better package than I do. I've been shooting longer than he does. He has a better wedding photography package than I do. And somebody goes to Noel first and then they come shopping me. I don't want to get shopped. I refuse to be shopped. Somebody walks up to me, they're like, hey, I just went over to Noel's photography and he's offering me this. I said, perfect, why are you here? Well, I want to see what you have to offer. I said, have you seen my work? No. Okay, great. If you like my work, we can come back and we can talk. Jeez, how arrogant. No, it's not arrogant. I don't want to waste my time. What did I say at the beginning of this? I do not like my time wasted. Because here's the thing, guys. If they dig your work, they are going to scratch and claw and do everything they can to book you. They will do everything they can to book you. And I, believe me, you can come up with creative uh, price, uh, payment plans, everything, but they have to love your work. I've had brides call up, and, and so back to the bridal fair, she came up, she goes, I could never afford you. And I said, and I, that's what I did to her. And she goes, okay, I, I could do 3,500. And if you guys look, this is the wedding that's up on YouTube, the Queen Mary wedding I shot, this is the one. I'll do a deal for you. She goes, what? I said, if you can do your wedding for 3,500 bucks, um, I'll do it, but you have to do it on a Wednesday in January. What? Yeah. <laughs> if you, because I just thought well, I'm not going to do anything on a Wednesday in January. So heck, sure. I'll make. Here's where we're, here's where we're stupid. Here's where we are so dumb as photographers. We, I cannot believe the money that we leave on the table. Like seriously. You have to ask yourself, oh, I'm a $5,000 wedding photographer. I've turned to people and said, so you mean <laughs> you're sitting here telling me you don't want to work for a day and make $3,500? Are you on drugs? <laughs> oh, it's not that. It's the time. It's all the, my time in the industry. Get over yourself. All, the only question you have to ask yourself is, is it worth it to me? Do I feel like making $3,500 today? Well, hell yeah, I feel like making $3,500 today. $3,500 can buy me a new camera lens, it can buy me a new camera, it can send me on a trip, it can send me to buy promotional marketing material. You have to think about ROI and how it's going to turn around your business and propel your business. Seriously, guys. And of course, this doesn't apply to any of you guys because you're all brilliant. I'm talking to everyone out there. Y'all gotta get it. You got to think like business people. So th she goes, yeah, okay. So how does it, I said, you go find a place that will do your wedding. She goes, well, I want to get married at the Queen Mary. I said, I, I, <laughs> I told her, I said, I guarantee you, A, you're going to save more money because they, don't, they will not have a wedding on a Wednesday in January. So you're going to save money on me and you're going to get the venue for super cheap. Oh, I never thought about that. I said, go, go talk to him right now. She came back 20 minutes later. Jason, here's my contract. I just signed for the venue. I said, perfect. I signed a contract on the spot. Guys, where are you going to make $3,500 on a Wednesday? Oh, I can't lower my rate. She's going to talk about it. Now, then my rate structure will be ruined. Are you in? Seriously? <laughs> this is the stuff we tell ourselves. I don't know who came up with this crap. I, I, I heard this growing up in the industry. That's all I ever heard. Oh, word of mouth. You'd be amazed how much word of mouth bull crap. Do you know why wedding photographers tell you word of mouth? It's because they don't want you to know how to actually gain business because they don't want competition. That's the truth. You guys want to know how to <laughs> I get off. See, I, always, I love talking about business. When, guys, when a bride gets engaged, what does she do? Registers. She registers. But what, wh where, wh where does she go? Come on, ladies. What do, you, what do you girls? What's that? Venues. Venues. Right? Does she say, ooh, I can't wait to book a DJ? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to go cake ta uh, cake testing. No. Wedding dress. Wedding dress. Those are the two. Those are the two you look for. Those are the two you buddy up to. I went to Alfred Angelo's and I said, hey, look, you, girl, you guys have a lot of ladies coming in. I said, for anyone that comes in, tell them I'll do a free engagement shoot. Oh, I can't do free engagement shoots. Sure. Guys, if you get me in front of a customer, dude, I am gonna, I'm going to make money. That's just the way it is.
You get me in front of them. If they like my work, I will find some, I will weasel some way to shoot their wedding. I will. You got to weasel it, man. I know weasel has a negative connotation, but you got to worm your way and, and make it happen. I hear so many excuses. Oh, I can't make it. There's so many photographers. Guess what? That means that the market is diluted. Diluted. That means your competition, the bar for your, for the comp, the competition bar is lowered now. So if you just happen to, I don't know, practice lighting, practice posing, practice your sales techniques, guess what, y'all? You're going to soar over the competition soar see it's not like you're going up I, 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 I I've never understood that concept either oh there's so many people out there that's great what if there are only three photographers in town and they were killer photographers and then you wanted to enter the market how hard would that be super hard but when there's a ton of mediocrity sur surrounding you and all you have to do is I don't know up your game it's not that hard you should not be afraid of all of these people coming in. You should say, dude, I'm going to just destroy you guys. Destroy you. That's the way I've taken on the industry. I'm going to destroy this. And I'm not taking excuses. And I'm not going to make excuses. There is so much money to be made in photography. Guys, you go outside. What do you see everywhere? Pictures. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Everywhere you go, there are pictures. Oh, photography's dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Instagram is taking over anything. You know, the funny thing is too, you know, look, you look at the Insta famous people, they, they can't convert it into money. Don't, I love the fact that you guys know who I am. I love it. On a personal level, yeah, I love it. But I always told my wife, if I can't convert it to money, it's meaningless. And I mean that. If I cannot convert it into something that supports my family, and enables me to live my dream, then, then it's really meaningless. It's just rich for the, it's not rich, it's just famous for the sake of being famous. It means nothing. Does that make sense? So whatever you guys do, I want you to think about that as we talk today. Think about ways for you guys to utilize the tools that we talk about to make more money. You guys still here? Hello? Talking to you. Hey guys, if you want to learn online with me, go to patreon.com slash Photography, and you will be able to continue this craziness online from anywhere on planet Earth with me. If you want to join me live, go to jasonlinear.com slash workshops, and you'll get to see me in my full glory live and in person, guys. I think there's a smudge on there. Is that it? Yeah, I got it. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.